In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today on Father's Day, we look at Paul's second letter to the Corinthians to see what the Spirit has to say to the church. And in this passage, we hear the apostles say, so we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. In this passage of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, he lays the foundation for the confidence that he has in Christ. He sums it up with these words. We walk by faith and not by sight. In the letter to the Hebrews, we are instructed that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By faith, the elders obtain a good report. St. Augustine once wrote, faith is to believe on the word of God, what we do not see, and its reward is to see and enjoy what we believe. Faith is believing that what is not seen shall one day come to pass. Every good work, every good work is done by faith. Every great accomplishment begins with faith. We never know how things will end. But if we do not take that leap of faith, we will never know what might have been. It seems to me that many of our regrets are rooted in the things we did not attempt. I have sat at the bedside of many people in my life, those in the sunset of their years. And I have heard many confessions about the things they wish they had done, but never had the courage or the confidence or the faith to attempt or to do. They didn't have enough faith in themselves or in God to venture into those places where they had never traveled before. And so when time was running out, they wondered what might have been. Now, you cannot live this life without the burden of some regrets. We regret some decisions we've made, believing that had we made a different decision, perhaps we would have lived a different outcome. We cannot escape those feelings of regret for the poor choices, the wrong turns, or the moral lapses of the past. But I have learned that it is much easier to live with the mistakes of the past than with the regret of those things I could have done but was too afraid to attempt. The ancient Chinese proverb is true. The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. If we do not make the first step, we can never complete the journey. And if we begin but do not finish, we will at least have the satisfaction of saying, I gave it my best. I accomplished as much as possible under the circumstances. I climbed as high and traveled as far 
as my strength and God's grace would take me. The Boston Marathon was always an incredible event for me when I lived in the greater Boston area. I have been told that the New York Marathon has the same energy and feeling. In any event, throughout the greater Boston area, people lined the streets waiting to cheer the runners as they passed. People from all around the world come to Boston to participate in this race. The Boston Marathon is known throughout the world as a premier event. Now, you should know that I am not a runner, and I shall never be. It is not one of my aspirations. It is not on my bucket list. It lives nowhere near my home. I think of it like this. Jesus was not a runner. So why should I bother? <laughs> and if I'm following in his footsteps, I might miss my way. So that's the answer. My exercise of choice is walking. And so it never occurred to me to register for the Boston Marathon. But for many people, running gives them a sense of freedom, a sense of accomplishment and strength. There are many people who enter the marathon who know that they will not win. Some even doubt that they will finish. But they enter and run nevertheless, and some do this year after year after year after year. And they do so because they know that if they don't, they will never have a story to tell about the journey. We must do all within our power to create engaging stories about the journey for these stories will inspire others. Your story about your journey will inspire others. We may never fully know the impact of our faith on the lives of others, but if we choose to walk by faith and not by sight, as Paul says, we have the assurance that our lives will bless the lives of others. And one life at a time, we will change the world. Now, the journey of faith does not come without a certain kind of burden. The demons of doubt will torment us along the way. We are mortal, made of flesh and blood. Therefore, we will become weary, and we will at times feel overwhelmed by it all. We will struggle with the weakness of the flesh, the weariness in our bones, physical afflictions of various sorts and kinds, for while we are in the body, we are away from the Lord. We will wrestle with the fears within and the fears without. When the battle is joined, we will fight the principalities and powers and the enemies of the poor, the oppressed, and the dispossessed. But God has promised. God has promised, God has promised, God has promised to be with us always. Jesus said, go into all the world, preach, teach, baptize, and lo, 
I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The journey, nevertheless, will not be without its burdens. In speaking of the burdens of the way of Christ, the late Phillips Brooks, esteemed rector of Trinity Church, Copley Square, once said, I do not pray for a lighter load, but for a stronger back. I must admit that I often find myself praying for a lighter load, not so much for a stronger back. And perhaps you have found yourself praying in the same way. But there is always hope no matter how we pray, for God will hear our faintest cry and heed our desperate pleas. The psalmist says, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. An anonymous poet sums up the challenge of faith with these words. Faith is not merely praying upon our knees at night. Faith is not merely straying through darkness into light. Faith is not merely waiting for glory that may be. Faith is the brave endeavor, the splendid enterprise, the strength to serve, no matter what conditions arise. Let us go forward from this day to embrace the brave endeavor and to welcome the splendid enterprise. And let us pray for strength to serve to God's great glory and to our great blessing and benefit. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.